to go back to your question when it comes to um, telling a story, it uh, really does come down to like knowing your goals on the front end because you might want to use that story for press and uh, press is um, that's what they're looking for. They're looking right. for a story. So knowing the story on the front end helps you shoot in a way that you can um, think through page layouts. Welcome to the Designers Oasis podcast. I'm your host, Kate Bendewald, interior designer, mama, and CEO of a thriving interior design business built on authentic word of mouth referrals. It wasn't that long ago that I stepped away from my corporate architecture job to build my own dream, one that would allow me more time with the people that I love, the ability to serve my clients at the highest level, and to make a great living. It wasn't always easy, and I've made my share of mistakes along the way. Fast forward to today, and I've learned a thing or two. This podcast is for you, the inspired, creative, ambitious, and let's admit it, occasionally overwhelmed interior designer who shares this dream of transforming lives by transforming homes. Join me and my guest each week as we walk through practical ways to build an interior design business you love and helps you transform your clients' lives. You can do this. Thank you for letting me spend part of this day with you. Let's get to it. I am so excited to be sitting down with my friend and interior photographer, Jeff Jones. I met Jeff when I was living in Texas, and I've had the privilege of having him shoot several projects for me. Jeff is passionate about interior design and interior designers. We also connect on the fact that we're both in Enneagram 7 and how that impacts the way we experience spaces. Today he opens up about talking what it's he opens up talking about what it's like working with high profile designers like Mark Sykes and Joanna Gaines. We also talk about the specific differences between an interior photographer and how they work differently uh, than the many other types of photographers. You can think about architectural photographers, real estate photographers, lifestyle photographers, um, but interior photographers have sort of a unique point of view, and so we talk about that. Um, And finally, we get into the kinds of questions that you might ask a photographer when you're considering hiring them for uh, your work. Uh, What I love about this episode is that we not only get into the technical details, but we also touch on more ethereal topics like capturing the story behind a project. So Jeff is such a kind and gentle soul. His passion for these topics, uh, the subject matter is palpable. Um, I know without a doubt that you will find today's episode both educational and inspiring. Please welcome my friend, Jeff Jones. Hi, Jeff. Welcome. How are you today? Good. How are you? Oh my gosh. I am so thrilled to be chatting with you today. Um, So today I'm welcoming my friend, Jeff Jones of Jeff Jones Photo. He is an interior design photographer and I'm so thrilled to have you. It's, I woke up this morning and I was like, I get to hang out with a friend, have a coffee and record our conversation. How fun is that? It's the life. It's the life. <laughs> I do. I feel, I feel really fortunate. I appreciate you, Jeff, this morning. I was, uh, just for, for our listeners, I'm, I'm human. I was in the groove of working on something and I lost track of time. And my, my dear friend, Jeff was so gracious to, uh, still hop on and record, uh, a conversation with me today. So I'm, I'm really grateful, uh, to have you. So Jeff has, uh, photographed for me for a number of years on a couple of projects. And I just only wish I had found you sooner. Um, so Jeff, you're based out of Waco, Texas. That's right. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Central Central Texas, Austin, Dallas. You do, you do all, all all of Texas and beyond. And beyond. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's no shortage of work in that area. That's for sure. Um, So last, what was that? When did we last see each other? November? Yeah, Yeah. sometime like that. Um, I I flew back to photograph a project that we had finally (laughs) 
wrapped up. That was the that was one of the longest projects I've ever worked on through COVID and yeah, COVID. The project the project had a f- the the pipes froze during that famous uh, freeze last year of 2022. Yeah. Despite these uh, precautionary measurements, which set us back quite a bit, but they had just installed brand new cabinetry anyway. So it was time to photograph it. And it was so good to get to work with you again. And I remember hanging out with you and Melissa at the table and having lunch. And we got to talking about just like the, the relationship between photographers and interior designers. And that inspired me. I asked you on the spot. I was like, Hey, I wish I'd had a recorder right then in there. because we, <laughs> we had such an awesome conversation over lunch. We talked about all the things we talked about. Uh, both of us, we learned that we're both Enneagram sevens, which I love about you. Um, so I said, can I have you back? Can we re- have a similar conversation, but uh, let's turn the recording on and and have this. So thanks. Thanks for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. And Kate, I, I love shooting your work because you are uh, just a, a huge personality in the best way possible. And it comes through your design. And I love, I love seeing how you listen to the, your clients, but you also still have your voice in the design itself. And it does communicate. And I love capturing that. So thanks for having me on here. And thanks oh. for, thanks for letting me be an expert to something that may help some people. So I'm excited to share that. Oh, Jeff, thank you so much. Those are, those are really kind words. And, you know, it's funny. I, that's how I feel about design, you know, is wanting to capture their vision, but also inject some of Your myself art. into it. Yeah, and I absolutely. just, and I, I, sometimes I don't know if that comes through, but apparently to, to folks like, oh, you, it, it does. does so. It totally does. Yeah. Well, and that's that could be a whole conversation because uh, <laughs> one 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 question that designers often have, especially younger designers, or you know, how do you straddle that line between wanting to have like a look that you're known for and right. also doing what the client wants and needs, and and I think right. that's such an evolution. But in any case, I feel like I've finally gotten to a place that strikes a nice balance, and that feels good. So yeah, yeah. Well, how yeah. I see it come through is through your color choices. You're great with color. And uh, I, I see that happen in all different spectrums of the colors that you use, but you make, you can make it fun, but you can also make it um, playful and sensitive. It, your use of color is amazing. So. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. That's, that's kind. Um, so take me back to like baby Jeff photographer. Baby and Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear, um, I want you to share a little bit about your journey into photography, specifically interior design photography. Um, like <clears throat> where did this start? Yeah. Um, so I went to Baylor university, um, here in Waco and <clears throat> I started off as a graphic designer. Um, I got my BFA actually in graphic design at Baylor. And you have to take a certain amount of hours in a different medium. And I chose photography because it felt like a good complement to graphic design. Um, I, through the process of doing graphic design, I just realized I hated it. It's not like a thing I enjoy, but I was so far in that I just had to commit. And because I was overloaded, I overcommitted as an Enneagram 7. Enneagram over- 7, hello. <laughs> <laughs> overcommitted with like all this all we the are, social things we are yeah, committed yeah. people <laughs> yeah i so in one of my photography classes um well this happened twice so in one of my photography classes my professor it was a film class and she basically told me i was lazy and i was overcommitted and uh, basically said i have a lot of talent and i'm wasting it and so i was kind of first offended because i'm like I'm lazy. What? But then I realized, <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe she is saying something. Um, and then uh, it was, I think it was my last semester um, finishing up um, at Baylor. One of my advisors was a photo photographer as well. And she was like, why did you not major in photography? And then, again, I could have had like two other, I think I just needed two other classes to complete in order to like make that my major. Um, and so I just kind of listened to that. It was just kind of like, okay, maybe people see something I don't see. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe that's just something to trust and risk on. And so 
of course, did all different kinds of photography. Um, was in the process of discovering what I truly enjoy and what I don't enjoy um, because you can do so many different things Um, and never realized like how you can make money doing photography. It was just kind of is a skill I learned. And so how do I serve people with it? And then um, I got hired on for at Magnolia as their in-house photographer, Magnolia Market here in Waco, and then basically helped build that photography department. There was, it didn't, it didn't exist. And um, I did all kinds of photography. That was kind of, I would say like my internship of figuring out what I enjoyed and everything from like product is product photography for the website, shooting for the Magnolia journal, um, shooting for HGTV, shooting for their blog right before um, fixer upper would air um, all the houses. And after having that like buffet of options of trying things out, I loved shooting the houses. Um, it just, first off, Joanna did an amazing job, of course, but, um, I think I just love, I've always been drawn to ar- architecture. I've always been drawn to, um, interior spaces. I, as a seven, you know, you walk into a room and you feel things immediately and you're just like, what, is that a what seven a, thing that makes oh, so much yeah. sense? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Like you, I've heard like <laughs> Enneagram sevens are like um, thermometers or thermostats. Like they walk into the room and they can just feel everything in the room. Yes. Like they, they just oh have gosh. this sixth sense. And I think that's kind of, I got addicted to that feeling of just like walking into a room and being like, oh, wow, this, yeah. this feels good. Like this is, yeah. I call it feng shui, call it whatever, but it, yeah. it, I just love the feeling of walking into a room and feeling inspired or feeling at rest or feeling calm or feeling energized. Like the, sure. the, you just, we, I think, cause as sevens, we, you know, our energy, we, we're, we're not quick to feel. And so when something helps us make us feel, it's like almost like therapeutic for us. That's how music is for me. It's like, I'm really going to have to dig into this a little bit more. It makes so much <laughs> sense. And I don't know why I didn't intuit this earlier, that that there's a relationship between being an Enneagram 7 and being so sensitive oh, yeah. to my surroundings. But I yeah. am so surround- I'm so sensitive to my surroundings, well, which is I'm- why traveling with me is hard because I don't want to stay in a shitty hotel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm curious for you, like, do you feel like you get in your head too much or are you like, think too much but then when you walk into a room or you find something that's very emotive it like Mm. stops you in your tracks you're just kind of like you're like I don't because I don't operate in emotions normally I'm always thinking um Mm. and then when something helps me feel I'm like whoa okay I gotta just like play that song 25 times or I need to I need to like go to that space every morning and have coffee at that coffee shop because, you know, you just, you just get addicted to it. I don't know how else to. Oh my gosh. I am like, scratch the plans for what (laughs) we're going to talk about. Let's talk about this. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. I think we're just going to have to come back. I would love to have an Enneagram expert come and talk. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Sign me up. I could talk about it all day long. Okay. So, so you had, so you got addicted to this, um, idea of shooting spaces because you were emotionally drawn to them in a way that other things didn't emote. Yeah, no, that's a great, yeah, sorry. We got off track, um, (laughs) but I'm always, I'm also always big picture. So I need to like, yeah, Uh come back to the, um, I, so yeah, so shooting all those things, loved working for Magnolia, um, but I just felt like it was time to, you know, freelance Mm -hmm. and just um, start specializing, um, kind of built a portfolio of what I wanted, which was very, I was very grateful for. Um, And Chip Chip and Joe were very kind for letting me do that. But I started working for, oh man, anyone and everyone that would take me for interior. So I did home polish. I don't know if you remember home polish. It was like a, it was, big on Instagram. I don't think they're no longer, it was like an online designer by Mm -hmm. the hour type situation. Um, and they had their like five year anniversary down in Austin and, um, they had me scheduled for a couple of shoots and then I had a dear friend that worked for them. So they, that's how I got that connection. And then, um, went down to Austin for this five year anniversary dinner and met all these different 
designers, but one who's a dear friend of mine, his name's Taylor Murphy. Um, he just kind of connected me through other designers in Austin and it just started becoming this thing that, oh, wow, I can actually do this. This is like a career and a need and, and mm -hmm. um, I enjoy it. So if we can both, you know, if I can offer this service and I can enjoy it and someone else enjoys it, maybe this is a good fit. Um, and then it's just led to um, many other designers reaching out yeah. and just word of mouth um, in that regard. So, yeah, that's kind of how it all transpired. Let's talk about, let's <clears throat> fine tune this a little more. When you say it's worked out, um, you have worked with some really high profile designers. So it's really, really worked out for you. <laughs> so I it, think you're, you're being yeah. a, a bit humble. So what, what has it been like working with some ho high profile designers? And can you just kind of share what that experience has been like for you? Yeah, I, it feels like favor and un, like uh, I maybe may well like for example I'm I'm assuming you're wanting me to talk about shooting for Mark Sykes and that that connection Mark has um mainly works with Amy who's a photographer based out of LA um and they are um dear friends he the way he talks about her is out of so much respect and yeah. um and she, it was, it was, I, I mean, just ironic and probably right place at the right time, but he was doing a house for a friend in Waco um, that he went to college with. Mark actually went to Baylor, I think for his first semester or maybe his first year and um, has a dear friend, Sarah Ainsworth, who basically um, has a house in Castle Heights, which is just a more, um, probably the older established part of Waco. Yes, and beautiful, beautiful part. Of beautiful. Um, <clears throat> and Amy couldn't shoot. <laughs> Coincidentally, which is the name of his first book and then subsequent book is called More Beautiful. So More it was, beautiful. A, yeah, it was an yeah. appropriate uh, right. yeah, partnership. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, he, Amy couldn't shoot the weekend of after all the installs and um, Amy reached out to Magnolia and they gave me my, my number. And so that was just kind of a... Um, a coincidence or just right place at the right time. And yeah. I was so nervous working for Mark. He's extremely talented and so kind and he styles everything. He's hands-on. He, he was on business calls while he was style. He's just fully hands-on. He's the real deal. And just like yeah. a genius with design and um, text textures and just juxtaposition of um, mm. fabrics and all he's just things. all the things and so and he's <laughs> so in and he's so much layering to his mm -hmm. styling that I, I love I just love shooting it so it was such a um, great experience and yeah. then he had me shoot for a couple of others so um, and then you know Joe working for Magnolia and still yeah. doing some of that but um, yeah. but yeah it's it's been a huge blessing and just feels like the right place at the right time and being willing to serve and show up and do what I need to do. So, Oh my gosh. Well, the work is beautiful and it, 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 it has taken both the a, a talented designers and your vision to see that through. So, well, let's get it. I want to get into kind of some logistic questions yeah, today yeah, yeah. around working with a design, excuse me, working with a photographer as from a designer's perspective, um, kind of the business side of that. Um, so we're going to go through kind of some rapid fire questions because yeah, I, there's yeah. a lot I want to get through and I want to be respectful of your time, especially because I was late. So no, <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, okay. So there, as we've talked about this a little bit at the top, there's so many different kinds of design, uh, excuse me, photographers. There's yeah. real estate photographers. There's portrait photographers. There's landscape photographers. There's architecture photographers. There's interior design photographers. Um, what sets an interior design photographer apart uh, and what, what makes you guys different? That is a great question. And I was actually at a workshop um, for shooting interiors up in Dallas um, a month ago, and this was a conversation that uh, there is a new landscape of photographers that are basically coining themselves as um, interior photographers. I think it was mainly like either you had architectural photographers or real estate photographers, and the architecture side would probably fit into that interior landscape. But um, I, I feel like people are now 
and and I'm I'm choosing to do that too. I'm choosing to go more design focused, mm-hmm. um, which just means um, I'm hearing of different things. But I would say um, you could either work with an architectural photographer or an interior design photographer. I definitely, um, depending on the budget for the designer, real estate would definitely be the cheapest option. You might just get really wide images, maybe some fisheye, some Boeing around the image itself um which if that's just where you're at in your business and that's what you can afford maybe that can really serve you well and maybe you just need to be more hands-on with that photographer and making sure that they're getting certain shots so you might want to like prepare for a shot list with them but i mean you're going to prepare a shot list with everyone but um but i would say interior photographers aren't really thinking unless the designer was involved with the structural aspects of the room and the building and like finish out stains. Um, I would say the design interior design photographer is looking what the designer did and how do they promote that? Because that's what you're going to be showing other clients. So like you're thinking through the fabric you picked out for the sofa, you're thinking through the rug, you're thinking through the, the paint colors, you're making sure that those colors are accurate um, when you're in mm-hmm. posts, uh, like th- things like that. It's more of like what the z- designer wants to highlight. I would say an architectural photographer probably won't think through those details, but will think big picture. And sometimes those images are beautiful um, and really does the job. But I think um, designers are wanting to truly showcase their work and like what they did. Um mm-hmm. And if, if it requires a wide, so I would say more tighter images, mm-hmm. they're more thinking about like the furniture, the wallpaper, the paint, the flooring. They're just like, they're more aware of those things um, yeah. than I would probably say the architectural photographer would be. Because um, architects will mainly hire architectural photographers and designers will mainly just hire interior designer photographers. Yeah, I love, so it sounds like mm-hmm. what you're, clarifying is really focusing on the the actual specific work of the designer and highlighting that and bringing it to the forefront which might mean tighter images um focusing on color texture pattern that color accuracy part is so so important um yeah. you have that in spades I, every time i get photography back from you it is feels so true the color feels so true um i've worked with you know, other photographers who've also done a great job, but I've often had to send photography back and say, this is over color corrected or oversaturated and it doesn't feel true. Can, yeah. can we adjust this? And and they've been able to do that, especially if I give them the specific paint colors or texture, yeah, or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, but that color, that truth to color to me is really important. And it sounds like you, you really understand that. Hey designer, are you tired of wasting precious time with prospective clients who are not a right fit? Do you experience imposter syndrome because you know the back end of your business is kind of a hot mess? Perhaps you're experiencing growing pains and you don't have the tools, resources, or team to support you. I get it. I've been there. As an ambitious interior design business owner myself, I know the roller coaster ride this can be. Over the years, I've learned a thing or two about running a profitable word of mouth design business, and I want to help you find success too. How would it feel to wake up and face the day knowing exactly what to focus on next, having a roster of enthusiastic clients, including a paid wait list, and having the space, time, and creative energy to develop projects that you are proud of and are portfolio, if not press worthy? I want to invite you to learn more about the Interior Designers Business Blueprint, a business coaching program designed exclusively for interior designers who want to serve their clients at the highest level while making good money, but without the burnout and overwhelm. If you're ready to get off the roller coaster, you don't have to do it alone. Join me inside the Interior Designers Business Blueprint and get the tools, teaching, and community you need to pave the way for an interior design business your clients love and you are proud of. To learn more, grab the link on your audio player or head to designersoasis.com forward slash blueprint. That's designersoasis.com forward slash blueprint. (music) 
There's something else that you've talked about with me before, and I want to bring this up because it relates to what you're talking about. You know, whenever I am talking with my designers, oh, I, say, I say my designers, my they they feel like my my friends uh, inside the Designers mm-hmm. Oasis community, inside the membership. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that we talk about is the role um, of looking at the home through the lifestyle lens. So, you know, where the contractor or architect, um, other tradespeople, they're going to be concerned with other aspects of a project. We're really looking at a at a home or a space, uh, whether it's a business or a home, through a lifestyle lens. So, how do we interact with our space? How do we move about it? How does what what does it bring up for us emotionally? Um, how do we want other people to feel when they come into a home? So, you've actually talked about getting the story, and I'm using air quotes here. Um, mm-hmm. And getting the story in photography is really important to you, mm-hmm. um, and that I think that comes through, especially if you guys I'll link to his Instagram, uh, in the show notes, but you can really see that, uh, emotion through your photography. So talk about what it means to get the story and, and, and how do you go about doing that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I think intuitively I'm trying to add more systems at play when I'm working with a designer in a project at large, just trying to figure out the story in general, like what, what was the overall inspiration? What was the muse behind creating the space, the way you created it? Um, Trying to figure out what was trying to be um, accomplished by the client and the designer together. Um, If, if that is lifestyle, if it is um, an emotion, if it is practicality, like what, what are the things that were the goal set on the front end and then figuring out what are the things that got in the way of that goal? What didn't get in the way of that goal? And like, what are the things that we're really trying to highlight? And I think mm-hmm. that's, it comes down to when, when you create the story, that's where the emotion comes through, um, through your work. And I, I often have a hard time and I don't know if you feel this way, but the when you're in this type of work it can be pretty superficial like you know you're spending a lot of money on things it's like but the heart behind why those things those decisions were made often get lost and Mm -hmm. um i think i think that there's always an intention behind the choices you made with your clients and um so i'm thinking when i'm working for a designer what is that and that's brand right like that's Mm. basically yes (laughs) <laughs> that's like your brand and that's what yeah. you're wanting to put out into the world. So people are attracted to that or not attracted to that. You know, it's, mm-hmm. um, yes. I'm it's glad just, that you've said both of those things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause everyone needs to stay in their lane, just do, do what they do. But, um, so I think that's, that's where I found <clears throat> to have, I end up having consistent clients because they, they feel that. And they, they, I also, I feel like a designer, by the time they're getting to the photo shoot, they, <laughs> they've been through a battle zone of <laughs> just working with contractors, you Blood, know, sweat and tears, literally <laughs> dealing with scheduling with clients, um, yeah. you know, the ups and downs of communication. Uh, like there's just so many things that transpire until you get to the photo shoot. And oftentimes yeah. I feel like the designer is just like, can you just like shoot this? And, <laughs> and like, they're just like, can you just like that? And they're like styling and they're exhausted and they're just like, and photo shoots are exhausting. So oh my it's gosh. like, they're, I've done I'm, three in the last two months and so I, I'm exhausting. so exhausted. <laughs> like, no, they, we're going to put off our next one still summer. No, it is, it is so much work. So I think um, for me to come in and actually ask some questions and, mm-hmm. and, um, make the designer fall in love again with the project versus not seeing all the complicated things that were wrong with it. Um, I love seeing that come alive in the designer and the encouragement they feel like, wow, I am good. Like, I, like, I know what I'm doing. Like, I, I think the, the story is just, it does so much. It helps with the brand. It helps with morale. It helps with um, even just, you know, of course, capturing what you just, spent maybe a year on six months on you know and it's it's kind of the culmination of it all and just like yep wrap the bow around it and get so the story is everything I feel like 
Yeah. To, to oh my gosh, I'm getting goosebumps because I'm thinking back to um, that project that we shot, and it was, and and I have to give a ton of cred to Melissa Roland, who was the lead designer on that, and she did an amazing, amazing she job, and she, she held those clients' hands through so much crap, and yeah, the clients themselves were so gracious, um, but it really did feel like a sense of relief having the photography done and it was an opera I think also getting those shots feels it like I'm trying to think of the right words but there there is a feeling of just like it brings you back to the original initial conversations and um it's always nice to be able to to reflect back um and and think think about that and and know that yeah. you know your clients have something that they are going to enjoy for decades to come so right right um and and being entrusted with that uh as a designer is a huge responsibility so um yeah. but yeah, yeah so so this kind of ties into um one of my other questions is um there are many reasons why a, a designer would want photographs for their business. The most obvious one is for their portfolio, right? We want to right, photograph right. our best work and showcase it because it shows our skill sets and how we can help transform spaces. Uh, but also the intention might be for press. It might be specifically for social media. Um, how important is it that a designer identifies their end goals um, prior to a photo shoot? Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> I think that it's, very intentional for the designer to think through their goals prior um, to a shoot because it's a big investment. And um, I think um, if you're truly hiring someone that knows what they're doing, you're going to have to pay a, a good price for it. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> knowing your goals, even like, let's say, to go back to the story conversation, like knowing the story that even helps the photographer know how to shoot in a way that could be used for press. And what is the overarching story? To go back to your question when it comes to um, telling a story, it uh, really does come down to like knowing your goals on the front end because you might want to use that story for press. And uh, press is, um, that's what they're looking for. They're looking right. for a story. So knowing the story on the front end helps you shoot in a way that you can. Um, think through page layouts. So mm -hmm. if that's something, so th some questions, a lot of designers that they can't fly me out because budget or whatever, they're like, what should I be asking? And I was like, well, maybe ask if someone tethers and if they use Capture One, because they can create, you know, page layouts in a way that you you know you're getting the shot that would fit a page. And like, and for certain page layouts, there's many different kinds you can use. Oh my gosh, you know what my next question is gonna be, right? <laughs> I yes yeah so I think I think yeah like what what else to ask yeah. but um I think knowing your goal for that press is um um really great it's great for um getting your name out there but if you don't have the story then maybe a lot of press people won't look at it and a lot of people use um like before and afters as like the story but I feel like there's there's always deeper meaning to to then just a before and after, you know, like what, what is the deeper story? So knowing your goals is key for that. Um, knowing your goals for what you need. So if it is just portfolio, then that, you know, and budget, that's things to think through, um, knowing the story for press. Um, and I'm trying to think what a, another goal. Social um, media. Social like, media. Yep, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Social media, like maybe thinking through stories and reels and, um, posts and um, just kind of what you're wanting to utilize that for. And maybe even talking to the photographer as well, of like, how do you handle press? How do you, and that could be questions you ask. Let's you yeah, let's get it. Let's get into that. Yeah. And, because I, and, and this, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. But, um, and I just want to pause for those designers who are listening. If you've ever heard me talk about the deep dive interview that happens at the outset of a project, it's that initial once it's the very first step in kicking off any project. So after you've done a consultation, you've gotten your retainer and your contract and dates and you're ready to go. The deep dive interview is this 
I like to treat it as like a dinner date or a coffee date with mm -hmm. your clients. And it's it's where in the consultation, you get the opportunity to understand the scope of the project and the, the, the overall goals in terms of budget and functionality and vibe and feel and all of that. So you're more focused on the project and the, the space itself. The deep dive interview is focusing on the people um, that are going to either inhabit this or if it's a business, what are their goals? And so that is where you start to get the story. And if you're skipping that step, not only are you missing the opportunity for incredible uh, inspiration for your project, but it's going to, the project itself can fall flat. And then you'll circle back around to that whole story throughout the project, but especially there at the end. So okay. don't miss that opportunity mm -hmm. to, to capture the story. Okay. That's cool. Let's say that you have researched, you have found a couple of possible options for photographers that you want to work with. I think it's important to design that designers invest the, the most that they can, um, especially when you're just getting started to build that portfolio. It's going to pay dividends in the long run. Um, and if you find somebody that you like to work with, it can be a really long-term relationship and somebody that can grow with you and that um, you it's a symbiotic relationship. So there are some specific questions that I think are important to ask a photographer when you're deciding if this is the right person that you want to work with. So um, let's talk about what some of those questions are, Jeff. Um, wh what, what questions, if you heard these from a designer, would thrill you <laughs> to hear? Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> I guess, questions that if a designer asked me, I would know that they feel educated in the process. Yeah. Because uh, I do think it is an education for designers to learn that <clears throat> you should ask, do you use a tri tripod first off? Like <laughs> that's like, I mean, for like 101 interior okay. photography. Gotta you, have a tripod. Have to have a tripod. Do you tether, which is really key mm -hmm. on the designers end because they you don't want someone just going and taking photos and you don't see anything that they did and you don't want to look behind like a little tiny. No, so screen. tethering is means that they've got their camera on a tripod, but then there's either wirelessly or wired. There's a computer laptop available yeah. or an iPad where the designer, you can look and see the composition and you can tweak it until you get it just right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would say, ask if they tether, ask if they use a tripod and ask if they use flash and how do they use flash? Um, there are interior um, photographers that um, just shoot all natural light, which um, is there. So there's three types, natural light, one that shoots flash and one that mixes both. Um, so the, those are kind of questions you should ask. Um, and you um, shoot primarily natural light, but you do I'm a both. I'm a both. You bring, yeah. you bring in the flash to supplement light. And yeah. I saw that in, in this last shoot, because there were some, like we have these built in bunk beds in the boys room. And I noticed that it was real dark in the back corner and you were able to shoot a light up there that helped bounce light back. And it, like seeing the difference, I was like, Oh my gosh, it looks so much better. This is why yeah. your cell phone photos look like crap. People don't <laughs> rely on your cell phone photos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, you use a little bit of both. That's your preference, um, which I think is great. Yeah. What, what then, else should we be asking? And I think um, asking what their post production process looks like is kind of, um, if you ever hear the word H HDR, just like, run away don't, don't what does that mean <laughs> it's what real estate photographers use there's like a built-in software into like photoshop that just combines many exposures um and creates that real everything's in high detail and very um mm -hmm. very um contrasty um so you don't want you don't want someone that does that um and i would probably say to go back to the tethering and and tripod ask how many exposures do you take for one image and what would um, be an answer that you'd be looking for you know i everyone everyone does sh has their way of shooting and it's very different but i would say you want someone that's gonna so in the post-production you want to add like are you layering these images in manually mm -hmm. not not with an hdr um like preset basically. Yeah. So um, for, for designer speak, I'm going to translate real quick. Yeah. Um, so what he, I had to learn this too. Basically what he's saying is that the camera's on the tripod and 
he'll shoot that they'll shoot the same image with different levels of exposure, meaning the aperture is open for a longer period of time or closed, right? My yeah, in that, the shutter. Yeah, yeah the shutter, shutter is in the ISO. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But blah yeah. blah blah. So anyway, yeah. then <laughs> then you're taking um, a mixture of the high, low, and medium, and you're blending them artistically in a way that puts the highlights where the you story. want it and the, and the low lights where you want. And you, yeah. but it's very much an artistic approach that post production and yeah. Yeah. putting it together in a in a very intentional way, not with some sort of an automation. Am I getting it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. About right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Good. And and I think um that approach is a more edi editorial way of shooting. Um it's just it's a slower process. It actually requires so the tethering piece really helps um the designer actually have eyes on the image itself and helps with the styling. Or if you hire a stylist, which I recommend every designer hire a stylist because it's easier to say yes or no versus like moving back and forth and moving all these things around. So um, worth worth the money and actually always helps the images um, look better. Um, but the, that, that tethering piece and then seeing all those exposures and even having the ability to manipulate an image, um, if they know how to do that in post, then you can feel pretty confident that they know kind of what they're doing. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the layering of the images. And I think the specificity of what you just said is going to be hugely helpful for designers yeah. who are really ready to level up their um, yeah. photography game. Um, oh, I want to ask you, did I cut you off? I feel like you were going to say one last thing. Okay. I can't, I want, <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> I, I want to say, I want to ask you one other specific question. So that's all kind of related to the technical aspect of photography. Let's talk about the legal aspect real quick before we wrap up. Um, I, can you educate us in a couple of minutes just about the 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 legal rights to photography oh, um, yeah. and what kind of questions a designer might need to not know to ask and might need to ask and not something you'd want to learn after the fact? That that is um that's a great question because it's all in a contract if they send you a contract. If they didn't send you a contract and you didn't sign anything you should be good to go with using it however you want to. Uh, talk to your lawyer, <laughs> but I'm pretty <laughs> sure, like if there's no contract, then there's nothing to really work with. But does with. that put you at risk of them using your photos for? It was my job to send them a contract. And so, um, so things to be looking for when you're seeing a photographer's contract is, um, is there any terms to the licensing agreement? Um, it, what is the licensing agreement? Uh, how I work is the photographer, as a photographer, if I shoot for you, Kate, you get the images, you can do whatever you want with them. For as That's how I just choose to do it with my designers. If it's more of a um, product-based business or um, service that um, I do put um, a lease agreement to those images. So they, for example, the designer will have it for life. They can use it however they want. But if I'm shooting for a business, I will put um, like in the next two years, this um, lease will be void or this um, licensing agreement will be voided and you have to repurchase. Um, and so that's something you want to think through is licensing agreements. Um, just that sh should be, that's the title. Like the but there are some agreement. photographers that they'll shoot for you and you can use those photo images for your portfolio but if it were to get press there are additional fees yeah. associated with it and so, so that yeah. would be a question that you'd want to find out so the, yeah the thing you want to look for is um third party what is their third party um basically agreement when a third party gets involved um how does the and that's normally it could be found in a contract or that might be a separate contract that states different things but you agreed to agreeing to a third party addendum in the contract um oh, wow. so so they're <laughs> just like asking the question all you have to ask is what is your process with adding a third party when a third party gets involved if that's press if that's a contractor that wants to purchase the images if that was the wallpaper guy that wants to purchase the images what how do how do you go about that um and because if the photographer owns the rights um they they sell those images to other people um and 
that are involved. Um, and I in, just want to say, I learned, I learned this the hard way. One of my early experiences before I, you know, understood the importance of working with a, a professional interiors photographer, I, I hired this, this guy who did it. He did a great job taking sort of that lifestyle type photography, <laughs> But very unprofessional, uh, you know, and and he was just getting started too. So it was probably a, okay for what it was at the time. But what I later learned was he was going to my clients behind my back and getting them to sign a release that allowed mm -hmm. him to submit those photos for um, basically stock imagery websites, mm -hmm. meaning legally an interior designer could purchase that photograph and put it on there. Not mm -hmm. that they would, but. Right, but right. they could, you know, yeah, put that on yeah. their website and there'd be no recourse for me. So not only was it unethical to do that, in my opinion, behind my back, but also the intent, his intentions were very uh, self-motivated. Um, Did he have a contract? When he... And no, I had no contract with him. Okay. 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 But he got these folks to sign my clients to sign. When I learned about it, I was like, what? Yeah. yeah and that's I, just, ugh. Yeah. And a friend, one of my clients, actually, the way I learned about it was one of my clients was a, um, an, a, a, a stationary designer and he mm. photographed for her and he did the same thing. And he, and that's when she was like, you absolutely can't use these for blah, blah, blah. And so, right, right. um, she, she called me, she's like, do you know about this? And so it was his business model, but he wasn't being ethical. He wasn't talking about it. So, you know, it's just things you don't know until you learn about them. And so right. um, I think there's so much more that we can talk about. I feel like we've just scratched the surface. So we're going to have to yeah. have you back. And yeah. um, but I think everything we talked about today is going to be so beneficial for designers um, that are just getting started as well as seasoned designers, because you can kind of know that you know, maybe you can't afford your Jeff Jones today, but if that's your goal, making sure that, A, you're building in your profits at, at the beginning of your project so that yeah. you can afford the absolute best photography that you can, because right. it's going to put you in the best light, right? And it's going to provide right. you so many more opportunities. Um, I think it's some of the best money spent right. uh, by far. And I, I would never advise that you skimp on it if you can't spend the most money that you absolutely can within reason <laughs> for right. where you are today. And uh, I would say another couple of things just for a designer to be aware yeah. uh, through the process of talking to people. Um, when you shoot that editorial process, um, mm -hmm. it means lesser images. And so I think also asking within the contract how many images. Normally, the um, uh, interior design photographers have half day rates or full day rates because it takes about half day or full day, if not multiple days to shoot a space and asking how much is it, how many images would you ballpark say that I would get in a half day? Um, and it, it could be around 20 images for a half day. Um, and that's something just to like be prepared for um, because they are sh shooting more intentionally and not as sporadically. Um, and that's images a is a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. 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 It is a lot, but like it, it's, um, and sometimes, I mean, there's like, even to give more perspective, if you're shooting for a business, like an edit, like when you have, um, products that you're shooting there, it'll probably take, it could take a full day and they could be getting four to five images off of just so much detail and intentionality mm -hmm. goes into that. Just, I think for designers to realize, oh, okay, it's, Better probably not to have more, but have more quality. I was going to um, say quality over quantity, I think, yeah, is the is, goal. So I, I would say, like, just ask that question in the contract as well. But we could talk about, maybe we do another conversation of, like, <laughs> how, do you, <laughs> how do you prepare for a shoot? What does that look like? And, like, all that it takes yeah. for the designer and the photographer and then even post. Like, how do you walk through press? That would be, like, there could be so many different things you talk about in that oh process but, but kate thanks for having me oh uh, my gosh this is a great way to kick off uh, and maybe maybe we talk about sevens and creativity or how do you use enneagram yes. to, for your to, for your brand and creativity and owning your strengths and all oh my that. gosh because well, i feel like because... oh man i could get on a soapbox with all that for so. those who are watching this on youtube on video like i'm just beaming i'm, so, I'm like <laughs> yes let's talk about those things um uh, that's what that's what this podcast is all about i try to bring on 
uh, people that I don't know as well as friends and just have a, a fun conversation and, and learn so much. Um, Jeff, tell people where they can find you um, out uh, out there on the web. On the in the inner interwebs, the, the, um, old, inter, the old internet, the, the old internet. <laughs> um, you can find me at um, jeffjonesphoto.com. Um, my Instagram handle is jeff underscore jones underscore photo. Um, I think that's all I have. That's so, great. That's, that's, that's great. perfect. That's where that's where we'll go. We'll, we're always yeah. going to go to Instagram. We'll always go to websites. That's easy breezy and we'll be sure to link to all that in the show notes all right jeff thanks so much i'll talk to you real soon okay see ya bye thank you so much for letting me spend part of this day with you if you're loving this podcast please share it with a friend who you think might also love it or perhaps you can take just 30 seconds to open your podcast app and leave us a five-star rating And if you have just an extra minute, go ahead and leave a review. This helps me so much and it helps other designers like you to find the podcast. It also adds fuel to my motivation to keep making great episodes just for you. However you choose to help, please know I appreciate you so very much. Thank you, my friend. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time.